All right, guys, stop the cap, stop the cap. What's up? This is Stop Capping, and I'm hosting a long, long awaited um, game talk. Game talk is usually a rough review and also like a breakdown and, um, you know, a podcast of sorts talking about video games and um, what, you know, what makes it fun and. When I do these game talks, I usually like to, um, you know, just have people feel like I can recommend them a game, um, especially if it's under the radar for them. But for this case, I guess this game is under the radar as of late because um, it's overshadowed by the fourth game that recently came out not too long ago. But it's Diablo 3. And, it, and to be honest, this game was really easy, in my opinion. I got the, the latest edition of it. Um, so, I, you know, I didn't have to buy the base game. I skipped through all the DLC and everything like that. So I'm trying to find out where it is. But it's the... Oh, here it is. Diablo 3 Reaper of Souls Edition. So, you know, includes the original game. It's the Ultimate Evil Edition. I uploaded the entire game, including the finale. I was more disappointed of the final battle than the difficulty of the game itself. Um, but, in the, in the flip side, I was told and I was observing how broken the monk is. I haven't tried out any of the other classes yet. Um, if anyone, well, of course I didn't upload any games uh, back in high school, but when Diablo 2 was out during high school, I was a necromancer main, and then when the expansion pack came out, when uh, you have to kill Bell, um, I was using the Druid for a while, you know, just to see, you know, what the game had to offer. Um, I, I stopped about like halfway in. Uh, because by the time I, um, I was, you know, leveled up enough, um, I was basically given a portal to fight <laughs> Bell um, throughout the game once I was getting through all the acts. And, um, you know, we just did the last boss fight, and I tried to do, to do everything I can to not get murked, but, you know, we beat him. And um, that was that was one of the cool things I missed about Diablo 2, where you linked up with randoms and your friends and all of you just, you know, DPS the crap out of Bell. Um, but in this game, I went solo. So there's a there's a point in the game where in, in um w- when you have the monk, you get this passive skill where you summon a. Um, familiar with you and the cool thing about this familiar I'll show you right now skills where is he Uh, is he right there oh there you go the the mystic ally Uh, I forgot what I forgot what level you unlock him but you know um, around midpoint of the game I think it's Act 3. I forgot what level you become. I think it's like between 30 and 40. Um, you get a Mystic Ally, and each uh, each element has a different perk. So this guy is pretty broken because, one, you know, compared to back in the day in Diablo 2, everybody kept talking about the Fire Golem. Oh, the Fire Golem, the Fire Golem, or the Blood Golem. Uh, when you had the, when you were kind of like 25 30 percent into the game maybe even 40 percent almost 40 percent you get the blood golem with uh, the Mechromancer. but the only flip side was if your if your blood golem died um, half of your health gets taken away because every time the blood golem attacks someone um, it regenerates your health and then the fire golem is just a ridiculous DPS beast but the fire golem can also get killed from what i understand it's been a long time but with, for in this game you get mystic ally he has infinite health 
He's always attacking. So let's break down what the uh, skills are. So when you have the water ally, your mystic ally performs freezing wave attacks in succession. The passive is um, it infuses attacks to slow enemies, which is cool. This is my main focus of the fire al for the fire ally for the mystic ally. Um, you, it splits into multiple allies that explode. That is the skill. Um, that is the skill that um, is a is a huge DPS attack where it splits into three people and then they just explode. Um, you really don't get to see it um, well because the game kind of lags. But um, you'll see that it'll deal, it'll, it deals huge damage for DPS. And it has a, a, a large cooldown. But I'll explain the passives afterwards for my for my uh, monk. The passive for this uh, skill tree is a mystic ally fights by your side that increases your damage. For the air ally, the active uh, skill is you gain a burst of spirit. The mystic ally attacks by your side, increases your spirit regeneration. Um, enduring ally, your mystic ally sacrifices itself to heal you. The cooldown on the mystic ally is increased. So basically, it's kind of like, almost like the bug, blood golem, but if it dies, it'll restore your health. Which is, sounds cool and all, but in the same time, it's like, no, I'd rather have the extra damage. Oh yeah, so the passive for the fire ally is, increases your da damage DPS. I'm sorry to... Um, I left that out. The passive for the Enduring Ally, a Mystic Ally fights by your side and increases your life per second. So I guess it's just health regeneration. Um, Earth Ally, your um, your Mystic Ally turns into a boulder that rolls towards uh, your enemies, damaging them and knocking them up. Uh, mystic Ally fights by your side, increases your life. Okay, that's lame. Anyway, I stick to this. And let's see. For my passives over here, increases spirit by 50, increases spirit generation, uh, you know, uh, by four, you know, four seconds. Um, I uh, four per second. Uh, spirit points. Spirit points are really important in this game because you have skills that you use and you sacrifice your spirit gauge, but it regenerates over time. But if you have a good set up where your spirit gauge regenerates you'll be it'll be fine um also another skill here oh here we go this is my one of my main passives that i love reduces old cooldowns by 20 percent it's good to have um i also have um mantra of healing um shroud you you and your allies with the mystic shield that absorbs damage it's pretty cheap um the cost of spirit is 50 but it doesn't it's not really that much uh, you'll we'll, you'll see what i'm talking about and then for my passive ability with it the mont the cir circular breathing mantra of healing also regenerates um spirit so every time i use that shield it regenerates spirit so it becomes a pretty cheap uh shield with the cooldown and then with the cooldowns i have that's by 20 percent and just the regenerating the the spirit, it, it all becomes pretty cheap at the end. Um, what else I got? Oh yes, uh, crippling wave, um, sweeping attacks. Well, uh, oh yeah. So with rising tide, each enemy hit regenerates additional spirit. Crippling wave damages turns into holy. So even with uh, you know other skills like crippling wave, which I think is like one of the best attack skills um animations and you, you add this to your um your basically your arsenal you're gonna get almost infinite um you're gonna get almost infinite spirit and then of course i have the the wave of light with explosive light releases a burst of energy that deals fire damage to enemies so you got you know it's pretty much already you fight a bunch of undead um people in this game is no secret so or monsters a lot of monsters that are weak to fire so th this is your bread and butter right here when you're surrounded 
And then uh, I got the Breath of Heaven, which heals yourself and nearby en allies. And let's get down to your um, your followers. So along the game, you get followers. Um, you can hook them up with different um, equipment as well. Um, so any equipment that you have left over, you can give them um, just as good as equipment as you can. As you can see, I try to hook up my um, my my companion followers with almost the best type of gear I could give them just to go through the game. The best follower character in the game, in my opinion, is the scoundrel. Um, his name is Lyndon. Um, you pick up different allies through the game, uh, chapters of the game. You fix first. You pick the Templar, then you get um, Lyndon here, the scoundrel, and then you get uh, you pretty much get like a sorceress, a priestess, who um, doesn't have you know she she has a decent amount of um, skills and magic. I, I feel a lot of people if they pick her. They just try to challenge themselves in the game, uh, and it, she's a she's a required taste. That's all I could say. And the Templar is pretty cheap because um, his skills are mostly for healing, so it's almost like you gotta get pretty much infinite health. But for me, I care about not just um, health, um, but I care about spinner regeneration and DPS. So we'll go over his skills real quick. Um, crippling shot, range attack that slows down enemies. Really good. And plus, the good thing about the Scoundrel is you're going to face a lot of enemies of the game. And once he's in the radar of the enemies that are on his radar, he's your long distance attacker, pretty much. Like he's going to, he's your, because you know, the monk is obviously a frontline fighter. You need a range person, so it makes no sense to have a Templar and the monk together all the time, or the sorceress and the monk together if the sorceress is going to be dealing, you know, her magic attacks to random enemies when you're trying to focus on a certain enemy. So the scoundrel is pretty much the guy who cleans up after everybody. Um, he also has in, um, the level 10 uh, attack. Um, and, an enemy increases critical hit chance for you and your scoundrel, which is a lot, which is really good as a passive skill. Um, another cooldown attack is piercing shot. Piercing shot is a range attack that uh, pierces and increases damage done to enemies. You know, it's all about the crits and the DPS. A uh, level 20 cooldown is the scoundrel launches a cloud that covers the area. All attacks against enemies that are instead of inside a uh, cloud will be critical attacks so when he does this this is like dps heaven for you and your scandal and your also your mystic ally or your allies uh, whether they're guest characters in your party or you have minions like the necromancer or whoever especially if you're the what is it the the berserker or the what is it, the, the warrior, the gladiator, whatever, the the barbarian, whatever, whatever he, he is, and um, he, he he you know he's one of those, he's a really reliable character in terms of DPS, especially um, Diablo 2 when he does the giant leap attack, and he does like his little tornado attack um, in the game in Diablo 2. So you know those barbarians or you know those tank you know um, those uh, those warriors, um, they're really good. Um, so this is a great attack to use, and that's pretty much it. Um, I can also show you the Templar and the Enchantress real quick. Oh. I'll show you her skills real quick. It, um, she got the Templar Pulse. Enchantress casts a guided orb and damages and slows enemies. Um, we got the Prophetic Harmony reduces your skills cooldown. This is more beneficial for your character, so your character can spam attacks or healing or whatever is you know is going on. Um, the Enchantress also has Erosion, conjures a pool of energy that deals damage and affects enemies that takes additional damage. Like I said, 
I mean, I haven't really seen her do much. And Enchantress, other um, passive attack, uh, Focus Mine and Aura, that increases attack speed for you in the Enchantress. So, you know, this is more like buffs and AoE damage, overtime AoE damage. So if you're into that and skills cool down, so this is more beneficial. She's more beneficial of buffing your character and also cleaning up a little bit of the mess, slowing down enemies and AoE. But I still feel like the Scandrel is way better. Let's see, and the Templar. Let's see, the Templar. So his skills, like I said, he likes to heal. He heals you and the Templar. He has his healing ability. Um, taunts enemies near you when you're hit. Of course, I'm going to go with the healing. Uh, what else we got here? Uh, provides life regeneration for you and the Templar. Uh, enemies that hit you um, by hit by uh, you or the Templar are slowed down. That's lame. Uh, charges enemy dealing damage stuns nearby enemies. Yeah, that's lame. But the onslaught deals a massive blow to the enemy and causes the target and the nearby enemies to take increased damage. So this is a good DPS um, build up right here. And then we got see guardian when you take fatal damage the templar will come to your head knocking back enemies and healing you but we got um inspire instead increases your resource regen uh, generation so um basically cooldowns and all that good stuff but i always go with the scoundrel oh yes yeah, so let's see what she has in terms of her other passive skills Increases static, electrical, damage bonuses. Let's see. Oh, charms enemy enemy to fight for you. I, I don't really believe in that. Power shield reduces um, damage from range attacks. Increases armor and slows melee attacks for you. With Enchantress. We also got Fate Slaps. When, t um, when you take fatal damage, Enchantress... Empowers you through time, slowing the world around you to avoid death. I mean, it's pretty much bullet time stuff. But like I said, I'm all about the scoundrel. He's the best character. So, if you are into Diablo, um, this would be a good fit for you guys. Um, if you like this type of Western you know, RPG, um, especially... If you haven't played Diablo 4 yet, the ruins of old um, or Diablo 2, I mean, th this is one of those games where you can still get into Diablo. Um, it's definitely an easier version of Diablo, but, um, you know, another of the less, it's a good game. So just to let, you, just FYI, um, this is a new game plus so you know I'm just showing you the basics here you know I already beat this entire game like I said um, let's see what else we got going on oh see so, yeah show you that all these attacks I can just practically just stand here and let my guys just deal all the damage I can show you my mystic ally skill. There you go. So boom. Look at that. Oh, that's awesome. And this game is pretty cheap. Um, I got this game, I guess from GameStop, like, it was like eight bucks. And I was able to play the full um, game. You're probably asking yourself, how do you get an eight, uh, eight bucks worth of Diablo 3? I'm like, bro, like, I just got lucky, that's all. I know some other game stops would um, probably be like, nah, we'll charge we would charge twenty five bucks or nineteen ninety nine or eight bucks, I don't know. But it shouldn't cost anything more than I would say fifteen dollars. 
if you were to buy it now from GameStop. I don't know how much it costs in a digital store. I could check. Let's see. As you can see, I, I got health regeneration too, but this is like just the healing for all my allies. Um, I forgot the girl's name. It's like Lydia or something like that. She's a guest character for the story mode right now. So she's a guest party member. She's not a permanent party member. So I can do all that. Oh. Look at this. They're just, they're just massacring. Just kill this guy. Look at that. I can stand right here in the middle of the, all these enemies. And my allies will do all the work. Oh look look at that look at that cloud. That's that that's that uh that's that critical attack cloud, what is it called? Knights Veil. I'm telling you man. If you have the Scandrel and you have Knight's Veil, vale, first of all, the Scandrel is already broken as it is. But every time that Knight's Veil vale pops up, it just murders people. Every time he, uh, my Scandrel pops the uh, Knight's Veil vale for those critical attacks, uh, to give you a chance of critical attacks, I always do this. I always do that attack. Which attack is that again? I do... Waves of light, explosive light. It's just, it's just overpowered. I wish I could show you more, but unfortunately, um, it's when I do New Game Plus. Um, after I defeated the Angel of Death in this game, um, I would think I was thinking that probably I was gonna go back to the hideout. Um, you know where everyone's at. Um, and I was thinking I could probably, you know, go back to my blacksmith, go to my merchant, or go do, like, post-game, um, missions. Nope. It just takes me right back to the beginning of the game, and you do New Game Plus. So, I know there's people out there that love stuff like this, but this was, like, a huge turnoff for me, because I was thinking that there's gonna be more content or more grinding just cause. But... Yeah, none of that happened. But like I said, um, I love Diablo. Um, this was the most fun for me in terms of just burning through the story mode. Because if you take care of yourself... And I like grinding in the game more than just passing through the game. So, um, you know, every time I do the gameplay, um, the gameplay videos... I always try to make sure I'm prepared for what's next. Um, that's pretty much what my younger brother does. I'm usually the guy that likes to grind out the person and just level up my character um, and just destroy the game. But this was like the first time in a long time where I just picked up whatever I can and did the best I can with it. And, um, you know, in this game, if you're worried about grinding, you're going to grind in this game naturally because everything is very linear in terms of the story mode and then if you want to revisit other you know um places um while you're while you're in a different act um you could the only bad um, thing is for whatever reason um I, I don't know how to do it but for whatever reason it once you go to a certain act um, I was unable to go back to um, the previous towns. So this is Act 1, and once you go into Act 2, um, I don't know how to go back to the Act 1 areas. If someone does, you know, leave a comment below in the comment section. But um, either way, it's better to go forward because, you know, you just want to grind and level up. As you can see, my character is not attacking any of these guys whatsoever. Like, the AI of my allies, they're just doing all the work for me. That was the one thing I was worried about. I was worried about, am I going to be able to go through this game without needing anyone's help online? And the answer is yes. 
um, years ago, a couple of years ago before COVID, I started playing this game with a friend of mine from my old neighborhood. Unfortunately, my friend, um, she was, you know, she was already married and didn't get to play video games as much. She was always working at the bank and as much as she loves her PlayStation time. Uh, we started playing together. I got my monk up to level eight and then um, I forget what other video games I was playing during COVID, but um, I'm pretty sure it was me playing Destiny 2, um, The Last of Us, Borderlands, um, you know, other Dynasty Warrior games, you know, um, anything that's action RPG or JRPG or uh, first person shooters. I also Overwatch. I used to, I, I played a lot of Overwatch also with my son and my family, but that was pretty much what happened. And then for whatever reason, once Diablo 4 came out and, you know, I heard how, um, a lot of people, I heard a lot of good feedback for Diablo 4 and people were saying like, yo, you're going to get the latest and greatest. I was like, man, I'm so backlogged. Let me just, you know, get through this game and then I'm going to just get to upload it. So, um, all the games that I'm backlogged on, I'm just going to, you know, go through these games and upload the, the gameplay and, you know, everybody will be able to, um, see me just go through my journey. And I think the next game I'm going to finish uploading is Samurai Warriors 5. I was playing that with my brother uh, with our own commentary. Um, me and my brother grew up um, playing uh, Dynasty Warriors, but he has a child on the way any minute now. And, uh, you know, he's going to be pretty busy. So I'm going to finish that off. And I need to do whatever I can to clear up my space of my, <laughs> my PlayStation 5. But yeah, like I said, um, Diablo 5 is a, it is a great, I mean, Diablo, <laughs> I'm sorry, Diablo 3 um, is a great, great game. Um, sorry, I got distracted saying Diablo 5 because me and my cousin um, from out, out of the country, we were talking about um, the fighting game community, how um, a lot of good players are playing Street Fighter, we're, we're playing Street Fighter 5. And they transitioned to Street Fighter 6. And, you know, we got some new faces trying to make a name for themselves through Evo. And, you know, I got caught up thinking about Evo uh, 2023. It was a great Evo, in my opinion. Um, but in the meantime, I've just been working and playing and uploading um, Diablo 3. Also, I finished uploading... Uh, Dragon Quest Heroes 2. I did a game talk for that game. Uh, Dragon Quest Heroes 2. It's not much of a difference in terms of... I decided not to do a game talk for that one. I really felt like uh, Dragon Quest Heroes, the first one, was a way better game. But I really enjoyed playing Dragon Quest Heroes 2. The only thing that was annoying about that game was... Um, the grind in that game was ridiculous. It was a ridiculous grind. And it was just annoying. But as you can see, look how o OP I am. Just merc everybody. That ability is not yet recharged. It's not yet recharged. Oh boy. This is just me attacking hit them now. So like I said, the monk is very broken. I haven't played any of the other characters yet. I'm pretty sure all the characters are great in their own way. I did like uh, the Demon Hunter uh, that my brother was using. I think there was also Demon Hunt Hunter and Diablo 2, if I'm correct, because I did use a Demon Hunter, a Necromancer, and a Druid, even though the Necromancer was my main. But um, we'll see once I get Diablo 4. Um, we'll see what, uh, what character I'll main. Maybe I'll still main the, may, maybe I'll still main the, the goddamn, uh, monk. I said she was a witch, but I never believed it. Just, just, just for shits and giggles. I'm carrying too much. Look at that. 
That was a nice mini boss. And my mother's journal. What I've seen of it is disturbing. I want to know more about her, but that can wait. We need to save Uncle Deckard first. I will find your uncle. Stay here and find out what you can. Thank you. Look at that. That was awesome. I didn't even need to be. I, I don't need her on the team, for a long but. Time, uncle Deckard avoided coming you know. back to this place. There were a lot of ghosts here for him. This is where Diablo drove old King Leoric mad and terrorized the people. I don't know what really happened here. But whatever it was, it was horrible. Nearly everyone who survived went mad. Well, you know, like I said, I'm a huge Diablo fan. I love Diablo since high school. Uh, the original Diablo was good too. I played the first Diablo. I hope they remake Diablo 1. If anything deserves a remake, is Diablo, the first one. And update it with the current like type of uh, classes. Oh man, it'll be it'll be crazy. I would love to use a bunk in Diablo one. That's a game that should be remade. Remade, not remaster, remade. I mean I'll play a remaster version also, but man. But of course everyone loves I mean, we all acknowledge um, Diablo 2 as the GOAT, because it is the GOAT. Out of all the Diablo games, and this is just an example of the story. Um, since I'm a huge fan of Diablo, I'm not gonna lie. Um, I would say the game is about. I would say eight point five in terms of like the overall game. If you were a first time Diablo player, but you love Western RPGs, um, maybe if for those who are not into this genre, uh, you might think of it as a 7.5. But if you guys love, um, I mean, I mean, most kids, <laughs> I mean, I was like 12 to 13. Uh, when the original Diablo came out, I was like 17, 16, 17 when Diablo 2 came out. So if you love horror, um, I grew up watching a lot of horror movies and, you know, obviously violence and all that stuff, um, you know, for the mature rating. If you're all about that uh, and you love Western RPGs and you want to play something new, um, yeah, you would, you would love this, but if you already been through this, you know, if it, if you already been playing kind of like the cookie cutter, if it's, if it, let's say in your opinion, if the game is very co cookie cutter for you because you already been playing this type of genre of video games for a while, uh, you might, cons you know, you might consider this game to be a 7.5, 8, you know, solid 8. But if you're a newcomer of this and you love the horror genre and all that stuff, it might it might be an eight eight point five for you. Um, I remember when I played Diablo two, I fell in love with this game, especially my brother. My brother was in middle school, and he ended up being a better Diablo player than I was using a sorceress, um, using ice rain and all that, and I was using the Necromancer. He made me look like a new. Um, yeah, there we go. That's that Knights Veil vale putting in the work. I might as well show you, show you guys some this gameplay. Show you how the story mode is. So it will contain spoilers. Oh, minions, stay back! Back! Oh, uh, there's Deckard. Home. Skeleton King? The power of the fallen star awakened me, and soon all will suffer as I have suffered. Gods, bring me his bones. Now, the only reason I would say, like, this game was easily a 7.5, I mean, 7.5, yeah, um. It's really cheesy in terms of, I don't know, I felt like this part right here was really lazy, like 
the Lord of the Rings Return of the King when you have like the, the, the cursed undead um, being threatened by um, Aragorn's Reforged uh, Sword. I felt like it was a cookie cutter version of that. Oh, thank you, but why did you risk yourself for me? It was not your time, old man. Come, Leah is waiting for you. Oh, it is wonderful to hear that Leah is well. I fear the worst. I learned of this secret passage through old maps I found. But yeah, that's pretty much it about that game. I, I like how this game is really in depth with storytelling in a in the Western RPG standard. Um, I still feel like a game like Tales of Graces F is really good. Follow me. That's it's probably my favorite um, Tales of game right now. Compared to other I other have games, kept my word and rescued Leah's uncle, Decker Kane. I saved him from a creature called the Skeleton King, who now bars my way to the Fallen Star. Well, that's all I got for you guys today. I hope. You enjoyed this game talk um, and I hope you guys are able to get into the Diablo series as I have in the past and the future um, if you haven't got the to play Diablo 3 make sure you go to a local GameStop or one of those mom-and-pop vintage video game stores they should run like about like I said, eight bucks to no more than fifteen bucks. It might be even twenty bucks because you know, um, no, <laughs> you know, the game is pretty much rare nowadays. Um, but if you want to play Diablo Four as your first Diablo, um, you might you might be in for a surprise how good that game is going to be. I'm pretty sure the game is really good. Um, I never heard of a bad Diablo game, even from even from the first game. But this is stop capping. Uh, take care of yourself. Like, comment, subscribe, and keep on gaming. Peace. Well. Yeah.